Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Thank you for taking time today to cruise in for Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy and welcome to our home in the Lone Star Community Radio Studios, housed here in Conroe Tower and in the county where the official flag of Lone Star State was born. I'm Randy right. Weldon along with Robert Helmer and sequestered over in the safe room slash sound booth is our sound engineer and producer Dick Schischler. We are broadcasting from Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 and 106.1 FM and streaming worldwide on IRLoneStar.com, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm Randy Weldon, and this guy here... I am uh, Robert Helmer, and uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, We have a guest over here on the side. Do you want to go ahead and introduce her? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I think we'll see how this goes, but if if it works out well, Dana Pritchard... Is in the studio with us, and and I think Dana might be a really good addition to add on to uh, uh, things on this show that we talk about that are car related. Because you've got how many years of background working with cars? Uh, t- almost twenty five years. Yeah, where you had your years. own performance shop, mm-hmm. yeah. performance and suspension business, and car club. Woodlands, started the Woodlands Car Club with a group of old timers back in two thousand one before. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, emails practically <laughs> well, and uh, smartphones. Welcome to the studio. I, yeah. I look forward to hearing some of your contributions as we go yeah, forward. I'm happy here. to be here. And I'm sure everybody recognizes her from uh, TWCC, Coffee and Cars. I would say they probably <laughs> do. Do you mean <laughs> cars and coffee? Or cars and oh, coffee. Jesus. Okay, good grief. We're being it's always corrected cars there again. before coffee. <laughs> it's, it, it, we got to get in our car to get the coffee. Yeah. Don't, don't get her upset. It'll be cars and coffee. <laughs> yeah. Cars and coffee. It's, it's like, always cars and coffee. Okay. <laughs> for a great coffee. I think I just like being corrected all the time. I don't, I don't I, know. I, I been, think I, you do. I've been volunteering <laughs> down there since, what, 2011? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I still haven't gotten it right, yeah. so don't worry about I it. I spent a lot of time correcting on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let us announce uh, who we have. On today's show, we have Berlin Wilhelm. He's the president of Northside Mustang Car Club. You know one thing we're going to have in here at, when he gets in here? A lot of people? No, three past three presidents of Northside Mustang Car Club. Yeah, that's right. Three so, past presidents. Well, well, I guess two, we got, Two past yeah. presidents and the current. That's right. So, and then we're going to have uh, Richard Jones. Richard Jones is uh, the president of Mustang Club of Houston, and uh, he'll be here joining us uh, with Verlin. And they're going to talk about the upcoming car shows they have. They both have two big events coming up. Uh, North Side is going to be November the 4th. Second. The second, okay. And New Caney and Bull Salas Park. And uh, Richards is going to be the Mustang Club of Houston. Uh, I don't have the date. October 5th? That'll be October 5th. It'll be at Planet Ford in Spring, Texas, right yeah. there on 45. Yeah. So they're going to come in. They're going to tell us about their shows and what's new with the uh, what's going on with their car club. And uh, also we're going to have a Zoom in guest, Gary Watt. Gary Watt. That's right. And he's with the Honor, Honor Flight, Flight Houston. Museum, yeah. right? No, Honor Flight Houston. It's uh, not a museum. It's a ch- oh, char- that's the charitable charity, organization. The charity yeah. for the veterans, They right? fly the veterans back to Washington, D.C. to see the war memorials, either right. for the first time or possibly the last time. Yeah, and I believe that's the charity for Mustang Club of Houston, isn't it? Mm, no, that's Northside. That was Northside? Yeah. Uh, Mustang Club of Houston is uh, still, wa- still Creek. Still, st- still Creek Boys and Girls Ranch. Yep. Okay. So we'll have Gary in here, and we'll talk about his uh, his organization he's and what over, they do. He's over in Chapel Hill right now, so he'll be zooming in from Chapel Hill. Oh, okay. That's good. Probably got uh, some good sausage or something he's picked up over there. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Before we get to that, uh, let's get to some automotive news and upcoming events and maybe a recall or two. Is there news? Did you, speaking of recalls, did you fix yours? No. You know what? I need to do that. I forgot about it. <laughs> God, thank you for reminding me. It's a minor thing, Dana. I got a recall from my Ford F-150 saying, you know, you might be cruising along at highway speed with your cruise control on, and the truck could sh- downshift into first gear. Yes, I think you mentioned that. Yeah, so, so I seriously to... need to get that looked at. 
So how long is it going to be at the dealer, do you think? What's these turnaround services uh, uh, like these days for uh, I don't know. those recalls? Yeah, I, I don't know, but my guess is you probably walk in and you're out like two hours yeah. later. Yeah, that's what I had to take my dad yesterday for his Volkswagen. And uh, I'm, I'm sure these dealers, they don't like spending too much time on recalls. It doesn't pay. Mm-hmm. A couple yeah. of bags of popcorn and some free coffee. and mm-hmm. Yeah, or it get you out of there. Then they're like, all right, the dude has consumed mm-hmm. too much popcorn. <laughs> and speaking of dealers, uh, one of the things in the news is the slowest selling new cars in America for September, according to Car Edge and dealer inventory data. So slow car sales. Okay. Well, slowing, or they're, they're just not well, as popular a, as the a, others. Right? right. It's the slowing mo- the models. Uh, They're not as popular as that uh, cyber truck thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, this all goes by the inventory data and the numbers of days it would take to sell the models. And uh, it looks like, let's see, the first one we up to the bat is, well, it turns out the newest addition to the Dodge lineup, the Hornet, the compact crossover, even with his appearing, uh, appealing starting price at 42000 I don't know if that's appealing or not. It's not appealing to me. <laughs> I don't know about you. So, I, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Dodge Hornet. Hornet. You said it was gas, gas, gas motor? Yeah, it's gas yes. motor. Okay. Didn't, didn't Mike Mars with In Wheel Time with that uh, podcast, he Did he zoomed do in a, from the front seat of Dodge Hornet. I, I think do, so. To do his call with us. Yeah, so. and he was, yeah, he was test driving the car. Mike, so you know, talk uh, better about those things. Yeah. <laughs> so he's talking and driving. Yeah. No, no, he was sitting in the front yard he was talking sitting in the front seat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> he had, uh, I think, he had some uh, teenage girls that showed up at the house, and hmm. they were a little too loud for him. Lots of props. Uh, so he had to go. Out to, <laughs> he had to go out to the car. <laughs> so yeah, it says they just can't get them off their lots quickly enough, according to Card Edge dealer inventory and the market day supply. The number of days it would take to sell all the models available based on its current sales. Uh, of the Dodge Hornet is up to 428 days. I, I think that's to sell all the inventory on the lot. I'm well, not sure. That's over a year. I know. Apparently, Dodge has 14,596 Hornets on dealer lots, but they've only moved 1,536 in 45 days. Wow. Yeah. And it doesn't get any better for the, the, now the, uh, the manufacturer that owns this has 14 brands, and okay. that's the Stialis. I think that's the dealer is the manufacturing uh, company. No, you, no, no. What is it? Oh well, it's it's it says the Chrysler parent it company. Yes, Stellantis. They, Stellantis. Stellantis yeah. yeah, they own 14 brands. They own. Uh, let me get this real quick. Uh, they own Dodge. They own Jeep. They own Mercedes Benz. They own Lincoln. And uh, so a number of things. They know a number of cars. Well, the, but the thing that really captures my attention there, they're laying off 2,450 factory workers from the Warden Truck Assembly. Yeah, well, that we can get to that story here. Uh, so another brand is the Jeep Wrangler. It is uh, the same 428-day supply, so it's not moving. The next one is the Mercedes-Benz EQB, which is a crossover like an SUV. So uh, that's another one that's not selling very well. The Lincoln, uh, was it Avilator? What is it? Uh, it's the fifth non-selling car. And Aviator. I was going to say Aviator Aviator. sounds about right. Uh, And the other one is the Jeep Wrangler uh, L. It's a little bit longer version of the Jeep Wrangler, so that's another one. I think they rounded those off a little too much. Did they say what the common theme was on why it was? Uh, No. Is it price point, all in different price points? No. They don't really have a reason why they're not moving, but they're just not moving. Hmm. Um, So it says also if if you're curious on what the fastest selling cars of the top three spots are, uh, Toyota. Uh, Toyota Highlander and the RAV4. That high, Highlander is a popular one. Yeah. The the RAV4, I understand, is just a really good value and, and maintains good value. So. Yeah. What does that actually look like? Crossover or SUV? Yeah, it used, to be, SUV a, used also? to be a small SUV. But yeah. It's, and the one that's always there on the list is best-selling is the Camry. Oh, yeah. That's always like, You can't seller. beat that. People yeah. trust those. Japanese yeah. cars. Yeah, you used to have a Camry, didn't you? Uh, no, uh, Acura. 
Acura. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the Honda Civic comes in as fourth there as the go. fastest selling car. It's tried and true. You know, those yeah. Honda Toyotas can't beat it. I mean, yeah. not American made, but they're tried and true, long lasting. Yeah. Take care of them. So. The yeah. only American product hot selling list is the Chevrolet. Let's see, Travantas? It's a big truck. Traveris? Traveris. Traverse? Yes. Okay. And that thing is huge. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the American products that are selling pretty Mm -hmm. good. Got to pack the kids and the dogs in. (laughs) (laughs) After you get it lifted, right? Mm -hmm. Well. (laughs) Then they get that special elevator riser to get the kids in there (laughs) when the door opens up the elevator comes down yeah yeah. puts you in there yeah power steps (laughs) power steps that's right okay uh and you're you're speaking about the uh, the layoffs over here yeah do you know that they're actually getting rid of the dodge ram i saw that on here yeah the they're getting rid of the ram 1500 the ram 1500 right That's, that's why they're closing that one plant and uh what they're doing is they're coming back with a Dodge, uh, I forgot what the name of it, it looks like a Ford Raptor. Well, they're, they're not closing the plant, they're taking they're, it from two shifts to two one shifts, shift. Two shifts, right, but they're still getting rid of uh, 2,450 uh, factory workers. Yeah, what, what really, really what lo- laser locks me on that plant is years ago, I put the television network in that plant. And what would happen was the, the workers would go on break, and it was about a quarter mile to each break room. So the, the plant manager would come down, and some of the, you know, as people were going the quarter mile to the, to the break rooms, they'd lose some people. Yeah. And, uh, and then when they get people going back to the, to the line to work, mm-hmm. they'd lose some more people. Yeah. So what I found out was it was $2 million a minute at the time when they took the plant, when they took the line down. So we put televisions up and down the line. And you keep in mind, these plants are two miles long. And they would crank the plant down, crank the volume of the TVs up. People would step a few feet into a break area to where a TV was, and the plant manager stood in front of a camera and would broadcast out hmm. his, you know, whatever his hmm. state of the nation. So you know, they didn't walk away too far from their platform. They didn't or lose many people. Right. Yep, yep. Okay. It, it was a cost-cutting measure. Okay. Well, that's one. The, the Dodge Ram 1500 is not. It's the low sales, so. But they're going with the 1500 tradesman truck. Now, it's like I said, that's like a Dodge. Uh, it's like a Ford Raptor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the price of that thing is about three hundred thousand dollars. So what they're doing is they're taking away, you know, the the, the common truck and going back with some luxury models vehicle that they're selling at 300 almost three hundred thousand dollars that's the one with the off-road package on it isn't it yeah the, it's yeah. yeah it kind of reminds me of the gm uh executive doing an interview talking about they're going ev and walking around the factory and they're filling orders of custom cadillacs evs and they're running at three hundred thousand dollars so it's like they're changing their their customer base. It looks like a little bit for higher volume EVs. And I, and I, I you know, and at the same time, while I was researching all this, it, uh, a lot of things I could see what was going on with the manufacturing. Uh, and and this and this uh, Stialis company, they're European based and American based. So they have. The, when you know when when our government says hey you have to be 75 percent ev by 2030 they're getting the same thing in germany and europe and all that the same requirements so i don't know when they when they used to do redesigns on vehicles you know you would see the 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 concept for a car that's coming out three or four years from now right well they don't have those three or four more years like they used to to redesign the car and retool now they got three to five years to go totally EV and try to have the technology catch up to them. So I think that's where the CEOs and what their mind thinking is of running the factories now is, hey, we've got to move forward to EVs because we're being mandated to do so. You know, California is saying, hey, we're not even going to let you sell gasoline powered cars in 2030. It's strictly going to be EV. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. So. I think I understand where the manufacturing part of this is coming from, and then we'll set to see where how it come how it plays out at the end. Yeah, yeah. But I, like I, I said, technology's got to catch up 
real quick because mandates are setting in and we're running out of time. Yeah, but those mandates will get changed. We'll see. All, that stuff always always gets changed. Yeah. You know, uh, they, they just had to do something to keep us up with trying to reduce that carbon yeah. footprint. And the, you know? and the thing with, uh, with the gasoline cars, I think inflation has a big part of it. I really do. Because it's the same thing. My car, when I bought my EcoBoost Mustang, it was nineteen five. I can't replace that. The, you know, I can't replace that now without about, about forty thousand. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so you know, within the four or five years, that car's doubled. There you go. It went up in price. Yeah. Look, at, look, you invested well, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I think inflation has a lot to do with the selling, the slow selling of the gasoline cars. But we'll see what these uh, manufacturers are doing. And, yeah, it's, we're seeing this with the uh, the EVs and the models that they're coming out with. It's just something to look into. What what What's your take on the EV stuff? Well, in my business, you know, building muscle cars, right. gasoline, fuel, injection, it's it's a different kind of speed. Yeah. You know. So, and we all, you know, we all understand why, you know, supposed to be saving energy, right, and oil and gas, whatever, and uh, and move to the EV. Yet. But at the same time, we have to keep, yeah. we have to protect our hobby. Yeah. We have to protect the gasoline and combustion engine and say, hey, you know, let's, let's share the road with both, you know. Let's, and, yeah, let's be able to keep our combustion engine, our hobby going, mm-hmm. and, you know, appreciate that, and at the same time share the road with the EVs. Well, there's different reasons why people I mean, make make those choices, whether it's gasoline right. or electric. I mean, I know a lot of people who say I have my muscle car, but then I have my daily driver as an EV, so right. I can still, you know, <laughs> be cohesive together. Yeah, and not necessarily you know, one or the I, other. And I think also is excluding you. You want the customer to make the decision, the consumer, right? Let them make the decision on which way we're going, instead of having government implement uh, rules some, sometimes though you've got to nudge the customer it's just the way it is yeah uh I, I can tell you specifically like in television production um the producing televisions not broadcast production but um we got to a point where we were changing out some televisions and there was a recycle fee because there's lead in the solder right well some of these hotels with hundreds of televisions were they didn't get caught, but they found them later. They were dumping TVs off in the lake, and that was, you know, lead poisoning. Lead poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> so they ended up going to a no-lead solder. Right. But so you had to put certain mandates in there. Uh, you know, there was still a recycling fee to this day, but you had to put certain mandates in there to make people move. Yeah. Move to some of the newer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's just part of it. I mean, people don't like change. I mean, it's about education, too. Right. But getting the proper information. Right. You know, there's a lot of information out there that's not really correct. So, you know, if you can educate properly where it makes sense, you know, and do your small part, but you're right about not being made to do all or nothing. Right. You know, yeah. I think you, sh- you know, it's got to be some reasonable amount of, you know, understanding why it could be useful or beneficial. Well, there's got to be good balance. There's there's always those early adopters out there like myself that when it comes to technology, it's like, oh, let me be one of the first to have that. Not a cyber truck, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but other stuff. Um, That's how I feel about my recycling bin. <laughs> Remember those days when we just had, yeah. you know, green garbage bags, throwing them out in the front yeah. yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every, everything was mixed together, bins. right? <laughs> <laughs> but how many people put a pizza box in the uh, actual recycling bin when not supposed to? Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's where it goes, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we need to go ahead and move to events. Uh, let's go ahead. We're we're at a point where we're ready to give station recognition but go ahead and okay what do you have on events uh we got wolf creek park october the 19th i um, don't know when this is airing hopefully we'll get this out october the 19th and the 20th i believe it's so- a, this air is the 16th okay actually. excuse me so. robert uh, do we have any events that are uh sooner than that because there's one sunday no why don't you go ahead and tell us about okay. it okay that's the hot rods and home runs at the Woodlands Fire Department uh, softball, softball game versus the uh, law enforcement from Montgomery County. Every year they have a softball game, so they're looking for people to bring out their special cars to, to be on a special display. And wh- what location is that? And it's going to be at the McCullough Junior High School. Okay. Uh, McCullough, okay. Drive, right in the Woodlands uh, from 3 to 5. 
and there's gonna be about 15, 20, 25 cars on display. And they're gonna have a food truck and kids activities and uh, it'll be something to show community support you know, for the firefighters right. and law enforcement. What's the time again for that it's one? It's gonna be three to five. Three to five. For the car display, they're gonna give away some awards about 4.30 and it's gonna be a fire, firefighter award, police award, uh, community choice, kids choice. Yeah, and what's the date on that? And then it's gonna be this Sunday this Sunday. Yep, and then the softball game is four to seven. So whoever wants to stay for the softball game, they're more than welcome to. But the car portion is going to be three. To five. So Sunday is the fifteenth. Yes, Sunday the fifteenth. Okay, mm-hmm. and you're going to be out there. I'm going to be out there. So you can go by and meet Dana. That yep. wasn't that wasn't even on my radar. Yeah. So. In fact, we'd love to have more people come out. This is the first time that they uh, they want to have cars out um, just to bring more people to the game and support yeah. the officers and the firefighters. I'll yeah. tell you what, you get the humidity mm-hmm. down, I might show up. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Hey, it's not bright and early in the morning, so you get to take your nap, come yeah. out. Uh, I'm, I'm never good before noon, ever. <laughs> okay, and the next one we got is October the 13th is Best Automotive. Wait, 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 wait. What happened to October 5th? October 19th. What? October 5th? Did you the forget? Mustang Club of Houston. I figured Richard would come in and make that plug. Well, well okay. But yeah. I thought you yeah. might put it on your list. Yeah. And October 5th is the first Saturday of the month? No, oh, yeah, it is. That's okay. right. Okay. Yeah. So we're... Right. Right before yeah. the first Sunday, yeah. which is what? Dana? The Woodlands Cars and Coffee for a There time. we go. At least you got it right. Cars and coffee. Cars and coffee, yeah. You were just breezing. And that was October. Time. That's October 5th, right? We got to write that down. It's October 6th for TWCC, mm-hmm. but October 5th is MCOH. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Next one, man. Okay. Next one is uh, October the 13th, Best Automotive. It's in uh, Kingwood, Kingwood, Texas at the Town Center. That's on Lake Houston Parkway and Kingwood Drive. And that's always a good show. Gets good reviews. Yeah, it's a good little environment over there. Nice little park right there. And they, uh, let's see, also cruise ins. Don't forget uh, Rudy's Barbecue and uh, Tomball. And that is uh, Steve Advocates. That's Speed, Adv- Speed yeah. Advocates. Speed yeah. Advocates. That's Stephen Cruz. It's on, uh, I think it's every Thursday night. Yeah, you got me. Every Thursday night, 6 Friday o'clock. Eve. I got I to gotta crank, yeah, Friday Eve. I've got to crank my Mustang up every now and then. Yeah, so he's been doing really good. I've been watching the reviews on this. This has really turned out really nice. So he's doing really good over there. And uh, this one, is, speaking of Northside, if uh, Northside is having September the 20th, they're having their dinner and greet and meet. So if you want to go and meet Northside, it is going to be at the Spring Creek Barbecue in Shenandoah. That's 19099 I-45 in Shenandoah. It's at 7 o'clock. It's a Friday night, September 20th. Go by and say hi to the Northside group. It's right there off of Research Forest at 45. And, mm-hmm. Right yeah. by Home Depot. Yep, just mm-hmm. right in the Home Depot parking lot. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then the national event, I got the MCA event, the Grand National and Historic Savannah, Georgia. That's going to be October 11th, 12th, and 13th. That'll be a, that'll be an interesting show. Be and, people uh, from around the world that show up for that. I think you're going to be there, right? I'll be there, and you're supposed to ride with me. So, Well, you're talking about staying an extra week, so I don't know if I want to just stay an extra week. We'll put you on a train send you home. Okay. Hey, going back to that Spring, Ke- Spring Creek location, just be careful. Leaving that event, peeling out. Shenandoah. 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 Yeah, the, <laughs> the great law enforcement of Shenandoah. Yeah. And uh, so also, if you want to know more about car events, just go to carshowfund.com. Look on the list. You'll see all kinds of car shows listed. And sign up. Just be there. Well, don't don't forget that Texas Regional Automotive Events that the Scaturos put mm-hmm. on. Every Thursday, they list what's coming up that weekend. Yeah. And then uh, the Sam Houston Corvette Club. I think uh, mm-hmm. you know about that one? Yep. Town she Green didn't know Park. anything about that. Town Green Nothing Park. Like that. Yep. October the 27th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's you Corvettes anybody, only, right? Corvettes only. You know Corvettes anybody that owns only. a Corvette? Just a few people. few people? Just a few. Okay. Just a few people. <laughs> so that might be a pretty good show. Yeah. I've got the address here. It's 2300 Lake uh, Woodlands Drive. Yeah, it's across from Market Street, H-E-B. Yep. Okay. Backs up to the uh, to the amphitheater. Mm-hmm. And then here we go. November the 2nd, Lone Star Motor Madness Car Show. November the 2nd, uh, New Caney, Texas, Bull Salas Park. And that's hosted by Northside Mustang Car Club. And Vernon will be in here to talk about that and give us more detail. Yep. He's, he just pulled up in the lobby out and, there. And uh, that is definitely one that you can go to carshowfund.com and sign up for. Yep. 
up and coming. That'll be a good one. And then, oh, we got Wild Horse. Oh, yeah. The yeah. September, September September 21st. September 21st, Wild Horse. So now we're going back with November. Yeah, November. yeah. We're, yeah we're, we're dancing all around this calendar. We are organized. <laughs> That's over in Silsby. What, what are you going to cough, cough on edit. us? Edit. <laughs> edit. 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 Yeah, no. no, he doesn't edit that out. I He'll know. just let it run. I yeah. found that out. <laughs> And yeah, I lost at, my headphones. That, that's at Silsby Ford over in uh, Lumberton, Texas, mm, okay. uh, September 21st. Hey, dude, now you cut my headset out. Okay, we're having technical difficulties we, here. We are having technical difficulties. That's okay. I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't we go to uh, a little bit of a identification break for the station? There we go. Does that work for you? Yeah, it works for me. All right. So this is Cruising Car Club Talk on Lone Star 104.5 and 106.1 FM. Or for those of you who may have wandered outside the listening area, <laughs> we can be streamed around the globe on IRLoneStar.com, YouTube, or Facebook. And, and we'll Robert, be right this back. is your part. And we'll be right back. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. He's got a big part in that. I want one. to talk about the Globe Trotters next. Car Enthusiast of Conroe, well, FM 104.5 and 106.1 Lone Star Community Radio invites you to shift into gear every Monday from 1 to 2 with Cruising Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy for news on all things automotive in the greater Houston Conroe area. Can't make a live show? We've got you covered. You can find all of our uncut content including full episodes on Spotify, iTunes, Play Store, YouTube, Facebook, and IRLoneStar.com. Again, that's Mondays 1 to 2, Cruising Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy. See you there. We are back and appreciate you spending time to cruise in for Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy. Robert, who do we have on this segment? Okay, now that I'm back and I'm quick coughing. And, I'm all, and we're your all mic's good. working again? My mic is working, so yeah, we're all good to go. Uh, our guest right now on this segment is going to be Richard Jones. Uh, he is the president of Mustang Club of Houston. And he's going to be talking about their show coming up. Aren't you a former vice president of that club? Vice president, sergeant of arms, and just a long-term member. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, hey, I'm, I've, I've been a member of them longer than I have Northside. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And also we have Vernon Wilhelm, the, pres the current president of the Northside Mustang Car Club. So welcome, guys, and thank you for joining us and being here and on a Friday uh, with all the traffic and all the stuff going on. Friday afternoon with really heavy traffic out right. there today. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to start off with Richard. Uh, how about first just tell us what's going on with your club? Well, right now, uh, next car show is going to be October 5th at Planet Ford. Um, and we have about maybe, expecting about maybe 70 cars and stuff like that. Hoping we have good weather. But um, we are, don't foresee anything, you know, coming up that's going to hinder our show and stuff like that. We've been building up, talking to people, telling people that we're going to have a car show at Planet Ford like that. And sometimes we may have a big show, sometimes we have a small show. It all depends of how the weather is, how people feel about a car show at that particular time. Yeah. What, uh, Richard, the, yes. uh, um, the, the car show is, your, your car show is set up so you can register at carshowfund.com. Correct. So people can go online to carshowfund.com, register now. Right. Um, it's at Planet Ford. Planet Ford. Uh, I'm assuming you'll have uh, some sort of a food truck or something out there? Yeah, Planet Ford always provides the food truck. We try to get them to provide two, but sometimes they say no because they had to pay a certain amount of money to have a food truck out there. So we're probably just going to have one food truck. Okay, now I, I think uh, Dick has thrown up your flyer on the uh, – well, we've got video running here also. So okay. You're on camera, man, if you didn't know. You, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, know, I noticed you didn't have your makeup done before you came in. So. <laughs> it's only like a camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we've got a I few. Did. <laughs> I told you we should have a makeup Yeah, we need a makeup person. That's right. <laughs> and how long has it been at Planet Ford? You know, I asked that question myself because this is going to be our last car show at Planet Ford. Oh, and, okay. Why is that? Because – Back then when we had COVID, they didn't have enough cars, and so we could have a car show at Planet Ford. Now right. they have an abundance amount of cars, and so they don't feel like moving all the cars to accommodate our show. And so they said, it's going to be the last show at Planet Ford. That's the same problem we had at Golo Ford, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Right. Yep. So where they didn't want to move the inventory and said, hey, y'all have to find another location. Another location. They're still going to be your sponsor, correct? They're still going to be our sponsor. 
Uh, they're not going to pay for trophies, but they're still going to be our sponsor. They're going to still give us $1,000. But we have to find another location next year for our show, yeah. the Panties for it. And so okay. i got to beat the path. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like knocking on doors, oh, man. Is. is any other events coming up that y'all are doing? We're going to have a Toys for Tot show out at Legacy. Okay. okay. And you register for that show, you just bring a toy. The toys are for kids who may not have a good Christmas. And yeah. so we bring toys. That's the yes, registration mm-hmm. fee. We're going to have a cruise to Ransom Steakhouse in December. Okay. okay? That's always our annual cruise. It's always a fun cruise mm-hmm. through the forest and stuff like that. Um, and maybe we have some impromptu things coming up. I don't know exactly yet, but we've got some things going on. That's good. Mm-hmm. So let me let me go back to your fall car show. Uh, mm-hmm. That's open to all makes and models. All makes and models. So we don't care what you're driving. Just come on. Just come on. And uh, we really don't care what shape it's in, right? Just nope. come on out. I mean, come on out. The bottom line is, what's the entry fee for that? It's thirty bucks. Thirty bucks and twenty five for veterans. Twenty five for veterans, mm-hmm. um, and the entry fee goes to a charity. Charity. I know yeah. that's that's what MCOH does. Mm-hmm. Still, Still uh, Creek. Is Still Creek. Still Creek Ranch. And yeah. Citizens for Animal Protection called Caps. Yeah. And we always raise yeah. money for our children. And Still Creek is a great place. I've been there actually a couple of times making donations, and the kids are great. Uh, I remember that one show we actually went there, and uh, the kids were lined up on the fence and greeting us before we got actually into the parking area. Uh-huh. And it's just, just, just blew people away. It, just, it was so emotional. It was like you just wanted to come back and do it again. They do so, have great kids there. Yeah. So, so uh, you, you've got the, the ranch, I've, and I've experienced that too. Those kids, it, it break your heart to see how yeah. some of them have been abused. And yeah. We're talking about small kids too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what's the, what's the other charity? Citizens? Citizens for Animal Protection. It's called CAPS. For Animal Protection. Yeah, Citizens for Animal Protection. So you've got to keep this guy with that hat yeah. away. Oh, oh my God. From the <laughs> cats and the dogs, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's over in Katy, right? It's Katy. Yeah, uh, Bear Creek. Yeah, okay. And you're having your, you are y'all still hosting your meetings there? No, we stopped hosting when COVID hit. They uh, decided decided not to it'll come back after COVID, and they use that big area where we used to have our meetings for animal adoption now. Okay. And so we not there anymore. So where do you hold your monthly meetings at? Uh, Different that, look? Is, that is true. I'm out there beating the path every month trying to find a place to host our meetings. Oh, okay, so it moves around each it moves month. Moves around. Oh, okay. They've been going to various restaurants, so it's mm-hmm. pretty good restaurants. So mm-hmm. okay. those teals. Well, actually, our meeting coming up this Sunday. It's going to be at Los Tios. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You may see me on Sunday because uh, Los Tios is a great restaurant. It's yeah, been there different. forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. The memorial, yes. Yeah. Okay, and I guess we can go to Berlin now and talk about his show coming up. Yeah, I did. What? Yeah. <laughs> Berlin? <laughs> What's the name of that little club? Uh, Northside Mustang Car Club. Hey, uh, we, we've got our show coming up on November 2nd. Uh, the Lone Star Motor Madness Car Show. We're expecting, last year we had uh, right at 170 cars. We're expecting about the same thing again this year. Um, there's 54 classes, eight best ofs and best of show. Um, getting signed up for the show early will save you some money. Um, it's 30 for outdoor parking, covered parking 35, and 40 or $50 for indoor parking. Day of show, those, those costs will go up $10 in each one of them. Um, so pre-register early, get paid early. Um, it's, it's a great show. We had a great time last year. Lots of things out there to, uh, to do. Um, you'll, you'll even get to meet Randy and Robert out there. Yep. You, you will. That's right. And I yep. think, honestly, I think that's why people really turn out for the show is because of the music that they're listening I to. I doubt so. that very seriously, but. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, Robert. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, we always have our, 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 our superstar uh, DJ, Randy. That's right, yeah. And he comes up with a, this is the weirdest list I've ever seen. <laughs> it a DJ Randy, why does he walk with that limp? Uh, yeah. you know, Do you have karaoke? Not, <laughs> yeah, they've been begging for karaoke for years now. Yeah. <laughs> and on both shows, uh, we we promote this all the time. Carshowfun.com, right? Carshowfun.com. Go on there and sign up and be ready to be in the show. You, you guys had him on just not too long ago, right? Yeah, he he's one of our guests. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's going to be around for a little while longer. So, so Northside, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we just finished up uh, a uh, car cruise here, not last 
a couple weeks ago. Yeah, uh, we actually talked Ag. about that too. We did uh, talk about that. 70, 70 cars. It was almost a rolling car show. Right. Um, had a lot of good input on that. One of the other things too, which is with the with the car show fun.com, we're doing a couple of judging clinics again this year. Um, before the show, we'll be putting those on, teaching. Those are open to everybody, no, right. not, no matter if you belong to a what Corvette club or, club or whatever. Just correct. come out there. Come on and, out. It's a free lunch. Right. Um, it's about four hours. We go through and teach um, how to judge cars, um, looking looking for more than just cleanliness. We're looking at gaps on body fitness, how well you um, put your car together, um, you know, how, you know, it, it just goes over a complete list of items that we're going to go through. We're trying to teach more right. than just looking for cleanliness and dirty on a car. Yeah. One of the things you talked about in the, uh, the judging clinic was, and I, I never heard this before, and it was kind of, you know, it was uh, when it says like you're, like you're looking at the interior, and it says dash. You know, you're, you're, you're not looking at the cleanliness of the dash. Yet. Yeah, you're looking at the condition the condition, how well the how well the car is put together, um, are there cracks? Uh, you know, are they cleaning it right. correctly? I mean, there's a lot of things that goes into a car when you're cleaning it. Um, when you're cleaning it, don't don't clean your windshields during a sunny day because yeah. you're gonna get streaks in them. You do, you know, you got the little tricks and things like that. Getting out that that uh, wax and stuff out of the cracks using Q-tips. There's a lot that goes into cleaning that car and what you, what you want to have presented at the show right that that was part of like an, an eye opening to me a little bit when when you when you go to the interior and you say okay it's asking how does the dash look how does your headliner look how do your seats look and then the last one was okay now cleaning this this is it one to ten so that that was a different way of teaching it you know that you're looking at everything in a workmanship part of it conditionship part of it then you go to the cleaning this part of it as you're judging the car. And, and the, the biggest thing that I ask all judges to, uh, to look at, when they're looking at the car and they're looking at the, the workmanship and everything on there, the one question I want them to ask themselves, could it be better? If you could say yes to that question, then it does not get a perfect score. Yeah. If it could be better, then it could be better. It ain't perfect. Right, right. Yeah. So... You're, you're having a judging, right? It's not perfect. You're having a judging clinic what date? Uh, the last uh, Sunday in September, and then it'll be the last Sunday in October. Okay. And, Richard, how, how are you judging at, uh, at your car show? Car show fun, same thing, same way. So you're doing the same, basically the same thing that basically this is? Same so, thing. so anybody that attends these clinics, mm -hmm. they're going to get a good education on it. I've been to one of your, one of your judging clinics. It's pretty informative. Yes. I, I would go, but it's before noon, and uh, I'm not much of a before noon kind of guy. So, <laughs> okay. so what's your excuse for being late? <laughs> Today. <laughs> uh, I'm also much more not much of a person being on time, but, you know. <laughs> okay, and also, Vernon, we want to talk about uh, September 20th. You're going to be at Spring Creek Barbecue. So if anybody wants to come meet Northside, they can come there. Yes. And uh, have, have dinner with us and uh, get to know Northside and, well, and uh, hopefully join. Richard got an upcoming uh, club dinner here too, this month. Yeah, I do. Yes, yeah, I thought this you Sunday. did. That, and Los Tios, what yeah, day is that? That's like what I thought. That's not meeting. That's not well, meeting. okay. All right, all right. Uh, board meeting. It's, it's a restaurant, so we will eat before the meeting. So right. Yeah, they can always come in and meet always you, and yeah, yeah mm -hmm. like a meet and greet, get meeting to know meeting. you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's yeah. nobody's locked out of the board yeah. meeting either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, the Russian eat until like that. Yeah, you probably have more member, uh, more people coming in to a meet and greet because they know they're not talking business and stuff. Yeah, that's true. Um, having meetings at a restaurant kind of cuts down the fact that having the meeting didn't go look for a place to eat and just have the meeting at a restaurant. More people do come because food is right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that seems to flow pretty well that way as well. Because yeah. years ago we would have a meeting, a four and a half hour meeting, then we would rush to go find something to eat. So the whole Sunday was Mustang stuff. So now it's cut down about two hours. Ah, uh, that's that's the best way to do it. Eat first, mm -hmm. yeah. and nudge people to keep them from snoring during the meeting. Yeah, yeah. have fun. And so, uh, are we still doing a lot with Wild Horse? Wild, yes. Your favorite DJ will be. <laughs> he, he will be at the Wild Horse <laughs> yes. show. So, but uh, they're still working with 
Mustang Club of Houston mm-hmm. and Northside still Coming doing up, things right? together, yeah. correct? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is is Mustang Club of Houston, uh, born in 1992, I believe. 93. Chartered in 1993. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first in the Houston area, uh, MCA, Mustang Club of America Charter Club yes. in the city. Mm-hmm. And then Northside in, I think, 2010, Nine. 2009, Nine. was yeah. the uh, second MCA Charter Club. Uh, and actually, Wild Horse was chartered, I think, somewhere around... Uh, 2007 or 8 somewhere back in there Um, but the three clubs work together and that's really why I wanted you to come in here or I asked you to to come in here today together was to talk a little bit about uh, how the clubs work together to to benefit each other making each other successful well one of the things is is that with the Mustang Club of America I mean we we're all we all belong to Mustang Club of America We're we're regional clubs of those we we support each other our members go into different shows and all that keeps our president's awards things like that that are, are going together we support going to each other's shows randy you you're yourself supporting with the you know doing the dj for two different shows um we're, we're out there helping them uh collect sponsors bring members in bring bring uh cars to their shows um we all have facebook web pages we're we're uh, got their banners up on our our sites so that they can see where the shows are at right and then like randy he's going to pull the trailer <clears throat> from our store shed to our show because the guy who was pulling trailers to the show <laughs> is not doing it anymore so <laughs> randy's, <laughs> Vernon's going to do it my wife is takes care of the money and the registration so like at your show our show and their show yes she right does yes. Yep. jackie does a great job yep. Yep. yes she does so we help each other out and, yeah. and then again sandy is uh, Mustang Club of Houston's uh, regional, MCA yeah. regional director. Yeah. 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 And then one thing is, it shows. For those, for those that don't know, Sandy is Vernon's wife. Right. With all the three clubs working together, that makes each show is, uh, you know, a winner and successful. And you couldn't do without the other club. Exactly. So that, it's just a good, good uh, relationship with all. One thing I would like to see again, we used to have board meetings with all the three clubs. Remember that? Yes. Yep. Board, we had board meetings yep. together. And I think I think when COVID came, we kind of dropped that. And so maybe next year we can get that together. Yeah, that's a good idea. I it'd bring that back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, during COVID, nobody could go out and do anything. So mm-hmm. that kind of messed up a lot. Of stuff. Mm-hmm. And the biggest problem I think all the clubs have locally, mm-hmm. I don't care which club it is, is since COVID, people are they're kind of trickling back out. They're not out in full force like they used to be. No, they're not. They're just coming back at a snail's pace. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm sure Dana would like to see all the Mustangs back at TWCC. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we, it's not the venue for that much space to where we <laughs> A handful's fine. A handful Tw- is 27 fine. 27 to 35 of them. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we can accommodate, we, but it's just hard for that. We've venue. had a tendency to, for a few of them to come out. Yeah. yeah. We get a nice amount. <laughs> no, I, I, it, it just, it's good to see the clubs working together. Um, there have been times when there have been divides where the mm-hmm. two clubs didn't talk to one another. But I think supporting each other's charities and stuff like that is very beneficial yeah. to all of us. It's a lot more fun. A lot more fun, and we get to know each other and realize, uh, you know, hey, pretty good guy over there. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd rather go to a car show and see 100 cars and not just 30. You would. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got we've got Richard Way as Envy Green or Envy Me Green, <laughs> yeah. Grabber Lime Green, Grabber Lime Green. Grabber Lime Green. You don't miss that car, man. Oh, no, man, you can't. Of course, when, you, I, when, you, I, when I bought it, well, I was contemplating buying it, and I asked the club, "What do you think about that Grabber Lime Green?" All the guys were a lot older than me, and they said, "No, no, 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 that, that's too loud. It's too loud." You know, no, 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 don't get that car. I think cop will spot you way down the road like that. You know? And so I kind of put it on the back burner. And then finally, I pulled the trigger about a month later. Yeah. yeah. Don't regret it either, dude. No. Yeah. You don't pull up to a red light without somebody notif- yeah, noticing somebody you. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. So, well, what you got? Well, you got anything else over there? Because it's about time to give some station identification here. That's it for right now. All right. Well, this is Cruise In Car Club Talk on Lone Star 104.5 and 106.1 FM. Or for those globetrotters out there, we can be streamed anywhere on earth at IRLoneStar.com 
on Facebook or YouTube. I'm Randy Weldon, this guy. And I'm Robert Helmer, and thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Every Friday, tune into Texas Ticket on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM with Armando Nino of Go Lake Conroe, focusing on Montgomery County area events and places. Get a feel of the Texas spirit at the event, paired with guest and vendor interviews, event coverage, and ticket giveaways, and so much more. Join us Fridays and punch your Texas ticket. For more information on the show, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Texas Ticket. Welcome back. Our guest this segment is Gary Watt, the Director of Development for Honor Flight Houston. Robert, you want to? Uh, Gary is the uh, Director of Honor Flight. And uh, Gary, can you tell us about what your uh, organization does? Happy to. Thanks for the invitation today. Um, Honor Flight Houston is one of over 120 cities across the country that make up the Honor Flight Network. Um, each hub, as they call them, is a uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, Honor Flight Houston is 100% uh, staffed by volunteers, uh, no paid staff at all. Uh, our mission, as is the mission of all the hubs, is to honor the service and sacrifice of our World War II, Korean War, uh, Vietnam War, and Cold War veterans by taking them free of charge uh, on a trip to Washington, D.C. to visit the monuments of their service branch and also of the conflicts in which they participated. Um, Honor Flight Houston made its first flight uh, in 2016, 2014. So this is our 10th anniversary. Uh, our flight, which will uh, go to Washington at the end of this month, will be our 31st flight. So we have uh, taken over 600 local veterans on their free trip uh, and memory maker uh, to Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's great. What, what uh, Gary, we've been involved, we, the Northside Mustang Car Clubs, with Honor Flight since about 2015. Um, how many flights a year? You, I think you've gone from like two a year. You, you're doing more than that now, right? Yes, we we try to do four per year. Uh, sometimes uh, it falls to scheduling conflicts uh, with um, uh, the timing in the springtime of the cherry blossoms and the crowds in D.C. for that. Um, we do not go typically in June, July, or August. Uh, simply because Washington's as hot and humid as Houston. That's a humid little place up there. A lot of water. And given the age of uh, of the veterans, uh, we like to go when it's a little cooler and more comfortable for yeah. them. But uh, like this year, we're only doing three flights. But typically, we try to do four flights per year. Now you're you're a hundred percent donation based, right? It that is, is correct. Is, and and. Unless things have changed, it costs about a thousand dollars per veteran to get them to go back on this trip. But that covers the flight, that covers the hotel, the, the meals, everything, right? Yes, unfortunately, that's even a little higher today. Um, of course, everything's higher today. Right. But uh, given the cost of uh, aviation fuel in particular, um, uh, it's at least a thousand dollars per veteran uh, is the cost. Uh, which is, as you, as you described, an all-in cost. What's the, uh, if, if somebody wants to donate, how do they find you? How do they get in touch with you? Uh, the easiest way to donate to us, uh, and that information is readily available on our website, uh, which is honorflighthouston.org. Uh, and there's a tab that says Donate. Uh, to get the maximum benefit of your donation, uh, if you're comfortable using Zelle, uh, you can do that uh, via a treasurer at honorflighthouston.org on a no-fee basis to Honor Flight. Um, or you can simply send us a check 
uh, if you wish to do so at our P.O. box, which is listed uh, on the website. Now, good uh, information there. Good information. I, <laughs> as, the, uh, as these veterans go, uh, when I first got involved, there were a lot of World War II veterans. And I, you said uh, that's been what it's been about nine years uh, since we got involved. Uh, it's you know our club. You're you're one of two charities that we donate to, and you're our fall charity. So the upcoming car show is all that money will go to uh, Honor Flight Houston. The proceeds from that show. But um, we were originally we had a lot of World War II veterans. Um, but you guys have, have basically a lot of those guys have passed away now. You don't have that many of them left at this point. Yes, at the end of uh, September each year, the Veterans Administration uh, publishes their national statistics about World War II veterans. And I think uh, this year, for the first time, the uh, number uh, still living uh, in the United States will drop below 100,000. Uh, it, sad to say, um, they are passing away at the rate of uh, 200 or so per day. Um, Texas uh, has about 5,000 or so, 6,000 World War II veterans. Uh, it is surprising. Uh, the flight we're doing uh, this month uh, has one World War II veteran on the flight. Just one. And the flight, the previous flight uh, that we did uh, before the summer, uh, we had three. Uh, but it's uh, becoming less and less. Yeah, that's just, it's, it's, a, it's a sad reality. Uh, by the same respect, it also opens the door then for the Korean War veterans and the Vietnam War veterans uh, to go on these trips. Because yeah. unless I'm missing something, these trips are really like sacred to these guys. Uh, being taken yes, uh, I like to tell people I've made five of the trips myself uh, since I started volunteering in 2016, uh, and I've yet to meet a dissatisfied customer. <laughs> uh, they, I, I tell them, and, and I carry uh, uh, business cards with me everywhere I go. Uh, anytime I see a veteran cap, uh, I go ask them if they know about Honor Flight, and I give them a card, and I say, you can't get cheaper than free. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So don't miss this opportunity. I don't care how many times you've been to Washington, D.C. over the years. You will have never made a trip like this trip. You know, I, I grabbed some pictures off uh, the Internet last night, off your uh, Facebook page and off your website. Um, I don't know if we can get those up there on screen or not, but uh, if we can, there's some pictures of the veterans uh, collected uh, getting on the airplane or prior to getting on the airplane, some of them on the airplane and some of them at the at some of the war memorials uh, in D.C. as well as some of the museums. Um, okay. The most of these guys travel because a lot of these guys are getting up in age, so they travel uh, with a chaperone, right, or a guardian, I think, as you call them. Somebody goes with them. That's uh, correct. Uh, during the actual trip on the ground in Washington D.C every veteran has a guardian. Now, part of those guardians actually travel with us round trip from Houston. Um, and uh, oftentimes the guardian uh, is a relative or a good friend of the veteran that uh, they invite to come with them uh, on the trip. Uh, other times they're volunteers within our organization. Uh, but to keep the cost down, uh, Honor Flight uh, organization in the greater Washington area uh, also has a number of volunteers who then fill in the difference uh, so that it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship on the ground in Washington. So can anybody volunteer to be a guardian? Uh, you have to be over 18 years old. Uh, you cannot be the spouse uh, of the veteran. Uh, but other than that, uh, there are a couple of things. Um, there are some potential upper age limits uh, because in the uh, event that the veteran uh, needs to use a wheelchair, uh, you need to be physically able to push uh, up a slope, for example, uh, 
uh, the veteran in a wheelchair. So there are some potential physical limitations, but otherwise, uh, no, anyone else can be a, a guardian. Outside of that, they can volunteer. So, and again, they would well, go we, to... We ask that our volunteers go through uh, what we call guardian training, uh, which is a one-time event. Uh, every flight about a month before the actual flight date, uh, we host uh, what we call a meet and greet. Uh, the Lone Star Flight Museum at Ellington graciously offers uh the facility at no charge to us to uh, to have the meeting and this is where um the veteran actually meets their guardian for the first time if it's not a, a friend or family member uh it's also where our medical team goes over the medical records of the veteran uh, so we have a clear understanding of what needs they might have uh, and so we conduct a guardian training session which lasts about a half hour uh, and then once they do it it's one and done so if they travel on a later trip they they've already been trained and it's largely safety related training uh, on uh, uh, how to be there to help the veteran uh, during the trip if needed well yeah you're you're dealing with people really that are up in age and have some health problems and they may have picked up some health problems along the way, uh, you know, in, in one of these conflicts, right? I mean, that's, that's correct. Yeah. That is correct. So you've got to have somebody that's able and capable to, to look after them, I'm guessing. Now, we also uh, have our own volunteer uh, medical team uh, that travels on every flight. Uh, so uh, it can be a doctor. Uh, it's always uh, an emergency responder and our uh, registered nurses. Uh, so we'll have at least two, sometimes three uh, medical personnel on, on each flight just in the event that there's a, a need for them. Yeah, what what um, it, it used to be, I don't know if it's still this way, but when you came back in from out of town, you would invite people to, to be at the airport to welcome the veterans back. Do you still do that? Yes, we call that our welcome home celebration. And... Uh, the crowd gathers uh, at Hobby Airport, which is where we fly from exclusively uh, with our partner, Southwest Airline. Uh, but the crowd meets uh, at the uh, JetBlue and Delta ticket counter area on the uh, entrance level to Hobby. And uh, our volunteers are there early to go ahead and kind of uh, whip up the enthusiasm of the crowd. And it's not at all unusual for there to be two or 300 uh, members of the public, uh, family members of the veterans, but largely uh, um, organizations like uh, uh, scouting organizations or VFW or American Legion uh, and just the general public that come out. And, and they get there early and there's uh, poster making uh, uh, materials and and uh, it's a real red white and blue welcome uh, yeah. to these veterans and it it really takes a special meaning to the Vietnam veterans because uh, as we recall that was a very unpopular conflict yes it was uh, here they didn't, they and, didn't get the homecoming and, like that uh, we we largely mistreated our Vietnam veterans yeah. when they came home so this is the, the really, after all these years, the first time that they've truly been thanked for their service and sacrifice. Now, I, I, it, it, I, I'm, a, I'm amazed that you have two or 300 people show up for the welcoming back. I didn't know that uh, you were getting that big of a crowd out there. Yeah, it's great. It really is great. Uh, we usually have one or two bagpipers that... Uh, uh, meet the uh, the single file line of the veterans. Uh, all the veterans are in wheelchairs, not because they physically need them, but because it is the fastest way to get them through the airport. And so uh, the bagpipers pick them up as soon as they clear security. Uh, and the crowds hears the bagpipes before they even see the veterans. And, very uh, nice. Very they, nice. They organize a, a gauntlet, and the veterans go right down through the gauntlet, high fiving and shaking hands, and and they're always emotionally touched by the welcome home. You know, I, as as you're talking, and I've been watching you here on camera, um, 
you you say it and there's a little bit of sparkle in your in your eye a little bit of gleam in your eye on this and a little smile on your face and just the memories of it i can tell uh make you feel good and it, it obviously makes these veterans feel good as well i've seen pictures with the smiles with these guys uh been out there carrying them in cars in the veterans day parade in houston and uh i i know that they feel good about uh being recognized for this um yes they do you know and uh like i said um uh, in my experience i haven't had a dissatisfied customer <laughs> can't you can't beat free either as you say but uh <laughs> but you've got to have those continued donations coming in yeah, and that's um, true. that and we that's get no, we get no um, uh, government money or anything like that to support this everything comes from personal uh organization corporate and foundation donations well and uh, and am i mistake uh, not mistaken here everybody that's a part of honor flight is volunteer Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. And 100% uh, of the proceeds go to uh, the, the, to the uh, operation of the organization, right? Essentially, yeah. I mean, uh, we buy, you know, the veteran hats that they wear and the polo shirts that they wear and the day packs that they take. But but that's expenditure to support the mission. So it's going to the veteran. Right. Yeah, no, no, that's a, an operational expense. That, uh, Is this a commercial flight? Uh, a large yeah. airplane okay yeah, oh, they're, these, they're, are not, these are not chartered flights okay. these are regularly scheduled southwest flights and and i can't say enough good things about the southwest uh, staff i mean they love getting involved and uh the last of the trips that i made uh we try to fly if possible into reagan international simply because of its proximity to the memorials and um, it's it's the biggest time saver for us. Right. And so on that given day, we flew in. Uh, there's a huge welcoming crowd uh, at the gate um, in Washington, made up of honor flight volunteers in the area. And then they kind of get the general public that are waiting on flights to join in. But the uh, we are always the uh, when we board the flight, we're the first group to board, uh, and we sit at the front of the flight just to give these veterans close proximity to the restrooms, um, and then the passengers get on. But when we arrive in Washington, it's just the opposite. We don't want to disrupt or inconvenience the passengers, so all the passengers get off first, and then the veterans get off last. And on the last flight that I went on, uh, the crew told us before we got there, now, we know you're going to wait until the passengers are off, but, but we then want the volunteers, the honor flight volunteers, to get off the airplane next, leave the veterans, because the Southwest crew that is on this flight terminating in Washington plus the Southwest crew that will get on this airplane for the next flight are going to unload all the veterans personally. Wow, how fantastic is that? And they always <laughs> insist on a on a uh, a group selfie, uh, yeah. so they they okay. come get in the aisle, you know, pilot, co-pilot, uh, the uh, uh, flight staff, uh, and they do a, a big selfie with the veterans. Uh, but they they could not be more supportive. Yeah. I have a question. Sure, go ahead, Dana. I wanted to ask, do you have a geographical breakdown of where these uh, veterans live as far as Houston, what areas of, of town? Yes, uh, I, I think I'm right in saying that Texas uh, today still has seven hubs. And so the Honor Flight Network, the national organization, uh, tries to assign some boundaries to each of the hubs geographically. So the Honor Flight Houston, and these are these are kind of rough boundaries, but we go uh, east of the Louisiana border. Uh, we go north up to Nacogdoches, uh, roughly speaking. Uh, we go west out to, uh, say, Schulenburg uh, along Interstate 10, and we go south uh, all the way down to uh, Victoria, Texas. Do you, so those do kind you, of some rough boundaries. Uh, any in Houston? 
Oh, uh, it includes all of Houston. Okay. I just wondered how many in Houston about that we had. Uh, how many Houston yeah. veterans mm -hmm. have gone? Yeah, that have participated or that we know of? Uh, are... You know, I don't know exactly, but it, I'm sure the great majority. Mm -hmm. uh, to date, we have done over 30 flights, uh, uh, about uh, 600 veterans in total. Uh, and I would say, without even looking at the numbers, at least uh, 85, maybe 90 percent of those are what I'd call the greater Houston area. Okay. Gary, for anybody that's, that's, a, that's a veteran or has a family member that's a veteran and would like to get them lined up to go on a flight with you, what's the process for them yeah, to... Well, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, go to our website again, uh, honorflighthouston.org. And on the home page, there will be uh, a tab for veteran application. You click it, a PDF two-page application opens, you print it, fill it out, and mail it to the post office box that is on the application. And upon our receipt, that veteran is automatically put on the waiting list. Okay, so they're on the list and it's just a matter of them uh, getting their, their slot? Scheduled yeah, the pecking in. order is uh, World War II first, uh, Korea next, uh, and then uh, Vietnam, uh, and Cold War, all right? But any terminally ill veteran who has been cleared to travel by their doctor immediately goes to the top of the list. Okay, good good stuff to yeah. know there. Um well, Gary, we're 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 going to need to wrap this one up. Uh, Gary Watt, Director of Development for Honor Flight Houston, we can't thank you enough for taking time to zoom in from. I believe you're still out in Chapel Hill tonight. I am, yes. Uh, out there eating some good I'm sausage in Navasota and Chapel Hill. Uh, you're out there where the good food is. And it's a really <laughs> nice country. So we do appreciate you taking the time, um, and and we we do appreciate everything that Honor Flight Houston does. Yes, we do. Well, thank you so much for the support, continued support of the Mustang Clubs and uh, giving us this opportunity to share this information with the public. The hardest job we have at Honor Flight is finding the veterans. Yeah. And, well, we hope uh, to be able to help you with that. Yeah. And any any time we take any help we can get, uh, I tell people uh, my most fertile ground is Costco. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it is. <laughs> every, time, every time I go to Costco, I'm always looking for veteran caps. Yep. And uh, uh, I pass out a lot of cards there. I'm sure you do. Well, thank you again. Yep. Uh, you have a great weekend out there, and uh, we appreciate your time with us. And hopefully you'll be back with us. All right. Thank, thank you, you again for this opportunity. All right. Thank you, Gary. You take care. Thank you. Dana, your first time in the studio with us. What do you think? Well, I was going to say, I can possibly, I was asking about how many he thought maybe lived in the Houston area, because I could possibly make the connection with Market Street's Change for Charity program. We can get that lined up. Yeah. Uh, is that, I, I but, know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they kind of, Montgomery County is the primary, you know, yeah. charity yeah, but you've, you've got area. veterans up here that but they take also. But that's why I was now. asking if he knows, you know, are there any in right. Houston, greater Houston? And you're on the Chamber of Commerce, right? Um, involved in the Chamber of Commerce. Involved yes. in the mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce. A member of the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. So I'm sure there's a lot of networking there going oh, on. Oh, definitely. I have a lot of resources. So that's yeah. what I'm saying with this whole, uh, the radio and then community, charity. We can bring a lot of people together and expand what you've already been doing. So. Right. And if anybody's watching the show right now, they can comment and say, yes, we want to watch, We want to see Dana more on this show. Yeah. Well, we're going to bring Dana back anyhow. Yeah. So whether they want to see her or not. <laughs> I can promise you this. They want to see her much more than they want to see you or me. <laughs> yes, so. And we're we'll going to make a person. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that's it for this episode of Cruise In Car Club Talk. I'm Randy Weldon. And that's I'm Robert Helmer. And yeah. we got Dana over here. Dana Thanks, Pritchard. guys, for having me. And uh, locked up back there in the safe room slash sound booth is our sound engineer and producer, Dick Schischler. We are broadcasting from the studios of Lone Star Community Radio on, on Community Radio yep. on 104.5 and 106.1 FM and streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com on Facebook and on YouTube. That's it. And we'll see you on the next episode of Cruise In Car Club Talk with Robert, Randy, and Dana. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>